This video is about biasing the 6V6 power tube, which is commonly used in fender amps all the way from the fender champ all the way up to the deluxe reverb. Now, what is biasing in the, uh, what is biasing? Uh, it's just simply stating or uh, setting the amount of current that is going to flow through the tube when the amp is just idle and you don't want too much and you don't want too little because if you put too much you're going to burn the tube and not enough and it's just not going to sound right so how do we do that well there's a few methods the method that we're going to talk about today involves using a bias probe and a bias probe basically all it is is inserting a meter in between the cathode of the tube and ground so you can get a reading on the amount of current that's flowing through and you can do that there's a diagram and you can look at uh, pin number eight will be connected to the chassis of your amp and that's where the uh, electricity is flowing to ground or actually from ground in into the tube and you want to insert yourself right in there and you're going to measure the amount of current that's flowing through the tube and then some amps have a pot where you can adjust it others don't and it's going to be a little harder but um, anyway this is just the bias probe part of it so you can do it in two different ways you can measure straight current uh, the one that I'm going to build today is going to measure voltage. So how are you going to measure voltage if you're interested in current? Well, it's because you're going to put a 1 ohm resistor in the path of the ground. And if you measure the voltage drop from here to here, uh, because of Ohm's law, it's going to be the same as the current. So if you measure, let's say, uh, 30 millivolts, it's going to be 30 milliamps flowing through, which is about um, the top end of a new 6V6. Um, so anyway, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to take an old tube. This is an old 6V6 tube that is no longer working. And I'm going to crack it open, and I'm going to use this bottom part. Then I'm going to connect all these pins To this old socket to this old socket so that I can plug that into the amp and then my tube in here and then I'm going to make a straight connection to all the pins except for pin 8 on pin 8 I'm going to put a 1 ohm resistor and then I'm going to put a place where I can stick an, uh, a meter in there and get my reading okay so the first part I mean, I, I could do it with new parts, but I, since I have these, I'm just going to clean this up. So, um, I want to clean this up, and then I'll continue. Alright, so here are the three components. There's the resistor. This is the socket where the tube will go. Then all the, uh, all the pins will connect, and this will plug into your tube amp. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, these are the original leads, I'm going to take these out and put some wire, a little bit thicker wire, and then do the, all the connections. All the pins connect to each other and then the, the resistor goes in between point uh, pin 8. So I'll do that next. Alright, so I cleaned up the socket and this part will go into the amp then all the wires connect with the corresponding uh, socket number pin 8 will get the resistor and your tube will connect in there and then we'll stick a meter between here and here and read the voltage so next up I'm going to um, I'm actually going to get rid of those wires put some new wire in there and do all the connections So here's the socket wired up. 
one ohm resistor on pin 8 and I've soldered one of my leads so I can use it to clamp it onto the voltmeter and I'm also going to house it in this PVC um, you don't need you don't need um, to wire all the pins because a couple of them are not used but um, I did anyway that way I don't have to think about it so the next thing will be to put this down here and wire the top and seal it all up okay so here is the finished product this is a, uh, a PVC coupling that I use for housing and I've checked with the meter and make sure there's no shorts so I check from here to here each pin and uh, no shorts pin 8 should have a 1 ohm reading so everything checks out and I'm ready to uh, give it a test drive this goes into the amp tube goes in here and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna use these leads and measure for uh, volts and uh, I'll put it in the amp and then we'll give it a, give it a try okay so I got it in the amp and then I got my volt or my meter set to volts direct current and I'm going to turn on the amp amp is on and there she goes So, 26, 27 millivolts, which will equate to 27 milliamps. So for this amp, I'm happy with that. It's under 30. The amp sounds good. Um, actually, I've been running this tube for quite a while now, and I play this amp a lot, so I'm happy with that. Um, if this were too high and it were a new set of tubes, that I, or a new tube in this case, um, I would want to bias it. Sometimes if it's a little high and you've had the amp for a while and it, it sounds good, and, and just leave it alone. You know, if something works, don't mess with it. So anyway, there it is.